Hello and welcome to a new episode of The Drop. I'm Fighter Chaos as always. This week's episode is going to be kind of brief. Or I'm going to try and keep it brief. But I always say that. Watch it be long. I always record these before I uh, edit everything together and notice that, oh crap, I talked way too much. But <laughs> uh, I saw Justice League this week with 16-Bit Jeff and I've been kind of uh, kind of out of work mode and I've been sleeping in a little too much and all that. So hopefully uh, this week I get back into the swing of things and... Uh, get everything back on track. In the meantime, if there's anything you guys wanted me to cover, again, my social media is in the description and on the video at the bottom, you know, you see my, my it says Fighter Cows on Instagram and, uh, and uh, Facebook and Ikari Radio on Twitter right there in the bottom, so I'm not a hard man to find. Just hit me up if, you, if there's anything that you want me to cover. Send me a link to something, some news you think is worth covering and I'll cover it. In the meantime, we've got some sad news. I think you guys know just by the intro I'm going to use. If it doesn't get, you know, <laughs> if, if it doesn't get me in trouble, which, uh, I hope it doesn't. It's just a clip. But then again, Toei doesn't care. I'm going to try. But I'll try to try. Uh, some Justice League news. Street Fighter, not Street Fighter news, jeez. Uh, some fighting game news. And some Marvel Comics news. So be on the lookout for all this as I continue, and uh, speaking of Justice League, later this week you're going to see uh, myself, 16-Bit Jeff, and Double RPG's review on Justice League in an Ikari Cast Classic, so be on the lookout for that too. And also stay tuned at the end of the video because uh, there's an announcement there that, you know, we want you to join us for our live stream, and all the info is going to be in that end video, uh, I guess you could call it a trailer. And I'll be putting it, I'll be sticking it at the end of all my videos this month, so, yeah, you look out for that too. Alright, let's get to it. So, in my first piece of news, um, Hiromi Sudu, who's known as Bulma from Dragon Ball, Meryl Strife from Trigun, Kitty Fennel from Silent Mobius, Ukyo Konji from Ranma, Azza, Azusa Higa from Warao Hyoteki, Sister Angela from One Pound Gospel and a whole lot more. Uh, she was also Reina in um, Yakuza, Yakuza Zero. Has passed away from an aortic dissection. Um, she was found in her car unconscious and was pronounced dead at the Tokyo Metropolitan Hospital. I, I, let me double check that. At the hospital she was at, I believe it was just Tokyo Metropolitan Hospital. But, uh, let me click the source here. And it's in Japanese! Fantastic. It's gotta be an English source, right? Getting this from my anime list, by the way. Um, it's also in Japanese, the other news. I believe it was Metropolitan Hospital. E either way, she was pronounced dead when, she, when they brought her there already. Um, she was... Apparently, it seemed like she, she was... Um, even though she was dying, she had this... She had the um, sense to uh, not involve any other, anybody else in an accident and pulled her car to the side of the road and that's where she uh, unfortunately died. I, <laughs> it's actually a good thing I'm recording this now because on the day I found this out, it was the day I was going to watch Justice League by the way, on the day I found this out I was crying a lot because I, I usually don't cry for celebrities, I, like, I do feel bad of course I'm a human. But, like, you know, I don't know them, but I guess since Bulma has been a part of my life since, what, since I was, like, 10 years old, I've been a huge fan of Dragon Ball, and I've been watching it subbed since I was, what, 13 years old? So, she, she, the original Japanese Bulma has been, quote-unquote, my Bulma since I was 13, and, you know, I'm 28 now, so it's like, I guess it's, she's been a part of my life almost, you know, it's, Bulma is side character either. I mean, if it wasn't for the fact that Goku is the main character, one could make an argument that in the original first couple of uh, arcs of Dragon Ball, where Goku was still little, that she was kind of the main character, considering that her character is based off of uh, the monk from Journey to the West. And Journey to the West monk was the main character, by the way, in Journey to the West. It wasn't Sun Wukong. Um, but, man, I... Rest in peace to Hiromi Tsu, especially if you look at Romantiku Agerio, which I'm going to try and put a clip in, short clip in, 
I'm gonna put some. Uh, I'm gonna put a screenshot of one of, of like how how happy they were and how Bulma centric you see the endings of the original Dragon Ball were, and you're like, wow. And it's just makes you even more sad. Like, man. And, so, and considering the new Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Super, you had the boogie back ending, which was like a shout out to the to the animation of the uh, old Dragon Ball endings. So you're like, man, hits you in the feels more. And then you find out her last voiced line in Dragon Ball Super that we've seen was her before they start the Tournament of Power saying, good luck everyone, I'm counting on you, and you get hit in the feels even more. Ugh. Oh. Man, again, like I said, if I was recording this on Friday, I'd just be a tearful mess. <sighs> I really do already miss you, Hiromitsuru, we all do, and uh, rest in peace. I actually barely made it through that Hero Mitsuru um, news right there. Uh, I was actually starting to tear up again, which is kind of why the ending was so abrupt there. I apologize for that. The next piece of news is hopefully some some brighter news, uh, especially if you're a Marvel fan and you haven't been liking what Marvel's been doing as of late with their comics. Axel Alonso has been booted as the editor-in-chief of Marvel Comics, and now... C.B. Sabolsky has been named the new editor-in-chief. Some hints, some history, I was going to say some info and history, I was going to say info street. <laughs> some history about Sabolsky. He entered the comic industry in 1997 as an editor for Central Park Media Corporation's CPM Manga. Wow, that takes me back. Central Park Media Manga. What wow, that... I that's that's I still have my Aiko tapes and uh, MD guys and Aiko. That was when that's when we called anime Japan animation back then. <laughs> yeah, man, wow. He left that company in 2001, and after a brief stint as a this is uh, basically me quoting from uh, Newsarama, by the way. Uh, he left that company in 2001 as a brief stint as a freelance editor on titles such as Image Comics, Noble Causes. He joined Marvel in 2002, and. He's been working under associate editor Ralph Macho, not to be confused with Karate Kid Ralph Macho. And uh, he oversaw the launch of Runaways, Wolverine Snicked, and Nix. And that's really what it's called, Wolverine Snicked. Um, what other people had to say about him, quote, spending these last 18 months in Asia and introducing more fans to the depths of the Marvel. Oh, this is him talking about himself. What other people had to say about him here is, quote, CB is one of the most well-known, liked, and respected editors and personalities in the comics industry. He has a keen understanding of the Marvel brand and knows the importance of publishing within the larger Marvel ecosystem, said Marvel Entertainment President Dan Buckley. So, looks like he's got some uh, some backing here, which I'm glad. You know, you don't want to name a president you don't back, right? Um, Sabolsky himself was saying that, you know, in Asia he was introducing fans of Marvel and he said also... Continuing with that quote I was reading wrong before. Uh, I hope to continue capturing the creative magic here at home and deliver inspirational and entertaining stories that are true to the classic Marvel DNA, but built with an expanding global mindset. Hopefully that's good news. Hopefully that's real good news. And, um, that we see comics that are more, you know, you know, like, like somebody said, they're, they're, diversity isn't bad. It isn't bad. It's not. Of course, it's not bad. In and of itself, it's good. But you know, switching heroes with other heroes, especially the ones in the movies, like like some commenters are saying, wasn't the right way to do it. Uh, hopefully, they go back to telling good stories, and that you know, all these other things that they want to do shouldn't just be pushed down people's throats and should happen organically. Good luck to C. B. Sabolsky. And going from Marvel to DC, there's been a lot of leaked Justice League scenes um, that have been popping up all over Vimeo. Uh, me and Jeff were discussing a lot of these scenes, and also um, on some forums, some people have even you know wrote a whole long, whole long like descriptions of what scenes were shot by Joss Whedon and what scenes were shot by Zack Snyder and what scenes were Whedon's ideas, and what scenes were Snyder's ideas, and what scenes were just taken out that were in the older versions of the script. And wow, 
there was a lot. Matter of fact, the original runtime was supposed to be something more akin to three hours. Fans are already <laughs> asking for a quote-unquote Zack Snyder cut to be released, even though a lot of these scenes weren't even finished, so there is no real Zack Snyder cut. He had to, he couldn't, he didn't film all of his ideas completely yet. He had to leave because of the unfortunate tragedy that happened in his family. So there's really a Zack Snyder cut now. Whether they re will refinish those scenes and put them on a uh, extended version, you know, later on the Blu-ray or something, is is the actual question, and uh, I think they will. I mean. <laughs> I really do believe they will. As for what was some of the uh, scenes that were cut off, there was tons. There was tons. There was a whole long list, but Screen Rant posted one really interesting one. Iris West, you know, Barry Allen's uh, love interest, was supposed to be in the film. There was even a scene where he's supposed to have... Let me, let me look this up before I get it wrong. Uh, Vinny's... The biggest scene shows Kiersey Clemens as Iris West and Barry rushing her, rushing to save her from a potentially fatal car accident. The other five scenes that were uploaded to, Vim to Vimeo all include Cyborg, uh, showing him learning how to fly, analyzing weapons data uh, in the halls of the Kryptonian ship, and two more that are rather strange. In what appears to be some sort of virtual reality display, a regular looking Victor Stone showed approaching a base of Nazis. And another scene controlling hundreds of missiles similar to what Magneto does in X-Men First Class. So yeah, Kiersey Clemens was cast as Iris and her scene was cut out, but she was shot. Iris West was supposed to be in the movie. And there's, like I said, a ton more. You can look these up on um, some forums, I believe Reset Era and uh, other forums have the, like these long lists on Reddit. You know, just looking... But yeah, that's like some of the big ones that were shot, and they're probably pulled from Vimeo <laughs> as of this recording. So, so um, you could try and look. But when you're hearing this, if you're like, "Well, let me look this up," you could try and look. Maybe somebody, maybe they were pulled, but somebody else re-uploaded them. Who knows? But uh, yeah, I can I can assume DC probably hit that with a with a notice. So yeah, that's some interesting stuff. I really do want to see um, an extended version. Sure. Some of it felt very rushed, um, but again, you'll hear that review later this week, hopefully. Depends on what else I'm doing. Yeah. By this weekend, I'm shooting at the latest, but usually I try and put these Kari casts out at, uh, on Wednesdays or Thursdays. But, uh, I'm not, I'm not, uh, holding myself to that on account of all the other stuff I'm trying to, trying to do some projects, you know, trying to make some of that paper, you know what I mean? So I'm a graphic designer and I need to make sure I keep myself out there. I don't make any money from this. Please, have you seen the views? <laughs> Alright, I got one last piece of news and then I am out of here. And again, I knew it. I thought this was going to be brief. I think this is going to be long. Oh well. <laughs> Not my last piece of news as I originally thought, but next up I've got that Arika's new fighting game uh, has been given a name and been given a, a date for its beta. Uh, it is now called Fighting EX Layer, which I assumed it would be called Fighting Layer for, because that was the um, arcade-only game that came out that was uh, helped with the Bandai, Na no Namco before they were Bandai Namco, and that was arcade-only and it had all the Street Fighter EX characters minus the actual Street Fighter originals, you know, like Ryu and Ken, but it had Alan Snyder and Blair Dame and all that, so. Seems like it would go with the same name, where it's, you know, going with that same series. Uh, they showed off a new character as well, Shirase, who basically is Hokuto, but evil, um, like evil Ryu. Uh, people who don't remember this, like, a lot of people are like, who's this, who's this, who's this? Ho uh, Shirase is basically uh, also known as Bloody Hokuto if you play Street Fighter EX, and it's basically, like I said, her evil Ryu version where the seal that her blood seal goes away, you know, it's, it's unlocked thing on her head. And when it's unlocked, she takes on the personality of Shirase. Like, you know, it's like another another her, another persona. And that's why she's called Shirase in this game. Instead of Bloody Hokuto. So the seal of blood has been broken on her and that's how you get Shirase. 
basically Evil Ryu. She gets like some more moves. She gets like different moves that look more violent and one of her moves is even called Renbu and she uh, ends the move with impaling her opponent. So yeah, you get all that and uh, more gameplay and yeah, the beta starts December 11th and it's for PlayStation 4 only as of this moment. Yeah, you never know with these things. <laughs> Speaking of exclusives not being exclusive anymore. Alright, time for the lightning round. Since these were brought to me late, I'm only gonna skim these over, so... The first thing that was brought to me was, uh... Hideki Kamiya... Hideki Kamiya... From, uh... Platinum Games... Has stated that he wants to work on a Beautiful Joe remake, a new Okami, or a Devil May Cry slash Bayonetta team-up. Um, quote, speaking to Dengeki PlayStation, he said, I want to work on a Devil May Cry and Beautiful Joe remake, or a true sequel for Okami. A cooperation with Dante from Devil May Cry and Bayonetta may, might also be fun. Dear Capcom, if it's okay with someone like me, I will help anytime. Best regards. Everyone, bow down your heads together with me. Alright, phone's taken care of. So my next lightning round thing is... Microtransactions on Star Wars 2 Battle Star Wars Battlefront 2. Uh, Disney themselves, according to IGN, Disney expresses concerns to EA and pulls microtransactions from Star Wars Battlefront 2. Disney's chief executive was quote alarmed by the backlash from fans over how Battlefront 2's microtransactions were implemented and pulled them. Wow, there's been a lot of, so that's, that's kind of crazy. Disney was even like, hey man, this is a little too, too much. We don't mind making money, but dang. But all right, I'll, I'll end it here, because I, I know it sounds a little weird, a little disjointed, but I really need to work on other stuff. So um, again, let me know what you guys think of all this stuff, and hit me up on social media. Hopefully I get back to the swing of things, especially, well, by next week I should be fine. So, oh, and happy early Thanksgiving. Hey there gamers, it's your friendly neighborhood Double RPG here, and I have a special announcement just for you. Myself and my friends 16-Bit Jeff and Fighter Cast of the Game Riffers are hosting our own live stream where we give our reactions to the 2017 The Game Awards by the Dorito Pope himself, Jeff Keeley. If you follow us on The Game Riffers and probably wonder if doing this live stream is exactly what we did during the press conferences at E3 every year, then you would be right. However, this event in particular is where we get serious with our antics and riffs, since the Game Awards usually has an identity crisis that gets so many people pissed off. We also are not sure if we'll cover PlayStation Experience, but Double RPG will cover it on his YouTube channel if we don't agree to do one for the Game Riffers. If you would like to know where to find us and when you can join in on our festivities, then fear no further as we got you covered. The 2017 The Game Awards by Jeff Keighley will happen on December 7th, 2017 at 8.30pm Eastern, 5.30pm Pacific but the Game Riffers will go live at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, just 30 minutes before the show kicks off. We will be going live at that time on our Twitch page, and you can find us at twitch.tv slash thegameriffers. That's where we always do our live streams on an event such as this, and you can guarantee that more shenanigans, live stream button noises from me, and massive hilarity and seriousness will be all over the place. Oh, and if you are familiar with our content and follow us during these times when we live stream, then you'll want to stick around as we have a big announcement that will give insight on the future of the Game Riffers going forward. We are very excited about this announcement, and you should be too. Either way, here's an outline of the event happening in December, and be sure to join us as we'll chat with you all, answer your questions about an event such as this, or other things in relation to gaming, or to just come on over and say hi. Be sure to join us for this time, as the Game Riffers are going to have another jam-packed extravaganza. Until then, we'll see you on December 7th when we go live during the time of the Game Awards that is hosted by Jeff Keighley. This is Double RPG signing off by saying Godspeed, and game on gamers. Peace out! <laughs>